Bob McLeod is the premier of the Northwest Territories uh, in Canada. Um, Bob, forgive me, that's the same as governor? Uh, essentially, it's the same as governor. Uh, and uh, in, the, in Canada, we have provinces and territories. So, But uh, with devolution, provinces and territories are essentially the same now. So, What, is, what does devolution mean? It means uh, these were the federal government uh, used to have all the uh, responsibilities, uh, provincial-like uh, responsibilities where the federal government owned the land, the resources, they would collect the mm -hmm. royalties. Uh, with devolution, we've taken over those responsibilities, so uh, we are now the same as a province, but uh, because of our small population, we're not exactly the same. I see. Now, while you have a small population, you've got a huge territory. That's that's right. We've, we're uh, 43,000 people. We're 1.7 million uh, square kilometers. So mm -hmm. it's uh, about twice the size as Texas. Wow. Yeah. And but you're natural resource heavy. We have very significant uh, natural resources. The Northwest Territories is uh, uh, third in the world in the production of diamonds. So if you want to buy diamonds, uh, you come to the Northwest Territories and. Uh, we're behind Russia and Botswana, but ahead of South Africa. And we have uh, very significant uh, oil and gas uh, resources. Uh, mm -hmm. Our oil and gas potential is uh, uh, 10 billion barrels of oil and about 92 trillion cubic feet of gas. So our problem is trying to uh, find a way to get it out of the ground and get it to market so be, and essentially those resources are stranded right now stranded how so we don't have uh, pipelines uh, or to uh, get it to market so we're looking at ways uh, in Canada 100% um, or almost 100% of the oil and gas is sold to the United States and with the United States becoming pretty well self-sufficient in oil and gas, we have to find other markets. So we're looking to Asia, and uh, so we're working very hard to uh, make that happen. Well, how does that work? I mean, would, when you say Asia, and I, I think the, the biggest population certainly is China, but yeah. India is right there too, and, yeah. and so both of them, the number of cars is going up like crazy in both those countries. Right. So I suspect that they're probably courting you, or are you courting them? Uh, we uh, we are I guess we're both courting each other because uh, I'm going to China uh, in January. It'd be my fifth time to to China. China is very interested in our oil and gas resources and all of our uh, natural resources uh, like rare earth, um, uh, oil, or I mean gold and lead and zinc, and uh, so they're very interested and we're looking to have them invest in the Northwest Territories as well. And uh, Well, and invested, what, what does that mean that, that they would just be buyers or would they actually co bring companies over or what would they do? Yeah, we're looking at both, eh? mm. you know, because right now it's very hard to raise capital to develop uh, large uh, projects and so we're going to wherever we think the capital is and China certainly is, as indicated, they're very interested in investing in the Northwest Territories. Mm. Now, you talked about diamonds as well, and then you talked about, well, basically, all of the resources that you've talked about are, are extractives. It's in the ground. Right. So then immediately I think of, okay, environmentalists are going to be banging on your door and saying, you know, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Are they doing that? They're already there, yeah. They are there. <laughs> We've so, had the pleasure, yeah. So what's, what's the response? I mean... Um, well, our response is uh, because we, we come from a background of Aboriginal people Aboriginal people that lived off the land, so there's a very uh, strong relationship with protecting the land and the environment, and uh, we see ourselves promoting balanced development, where we can have de development while we're protecting uh, the land and the environment. We have very rigorous uh, regulatory processes uh, that make sure that uh, we uh, put in place measures when we develop that uh, to uh, mitigate uh, the effects of development. Let's go to diamonds for a minute because that's something that, uh, yeah. you know, 
Diamonds are a girl's wrist friend, That's they, right, they yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but the question is, is um, how do you mine diamonds these days? Is it changed? Because we're here in an innovation conference. Is somebody saying, well, I've got a different way to mine diamonds? Well, it's, it's very different than uh, regular mining because it, there's no uh, chemical side effects. And uh, we, for a long time, nobody ever thought there was diamonds in, uh, in the Northwest Territories or Canada. And it wasn't about until about 15 years ago that uh, uh, diamonds were discovered and set off a large staking rush. So now we have three diamond mines that are in operation. A fourth diamond mine is under construction. And um, essentially, they all start off, diamonds are found in uh, kimberlite pipes that uh, were formed during the Ice Age. And uh, all of three of them, existing mines started off with uh, surface mining, but now they've uh, mined the easy to get diamonds, so now they're underground. So they're like an underground operation where you have to go deep in the ground to, to mine the diamonds. And uh, so we export, that's our largest export is diamonds. We export $2 billion a year worth of diamonds. And our largest market uh, was and still is the United States, although it's expanding in China and India now. So Premier, I've got to ask you, with, with all of these resources, it sounds to me like um, you're 43,000 people that you have in the territories probably should be doing pretty well. Yes, uh, we we have uh, the highest per capita salaries in Canada in Yellowknife, and uh, and people uh, get the skills, they get good jobs, and uh, so they have they have the ability to live wherever they want, and mm -hmm. so we have a lot of fly in, fly out workers, which. To us, it's becoming a problem now. How so? Well, if you fly in, we think if you work in the north, you should live in the north. And so we have a lot of workers that uh, flying in from Alberta, British Columbia, Saskatchewan. And with that, they pay taxes where they live, oh, not, not where they work, which we want to find a way to change that. Mm. Let's look down the road five years with all of these resources. Uh, that you have and the negotiations that you have right now. What do you think uh, Yellowknife and the Northwest Territories is going to look like in five years? Oh, well, you know, we, we, we also have other resources, like we have tremendous uh, hydro generation potential. So in five years, I think we uh, expect our population to grow. We expect to have our GDP to double. We expect to have at least... Uh, five new mines built and operational and uh, we're expecting our oil and gas uh, to take off and uh, and so that we'll be uh, developing our significant oil and gas potential and uh, e even shipping oil and north uh, to markets in Asia to markets in Europe and to the offshore on the east coast of Canada United States wow. Premier thank you very much thank you very much